took a single shower. So you're not going to take a shower here for about three months, for about three months or more at the ships, till you make it out here. And their last bath was taken about 31 kilometers away from here. So the question here is what's going to happen at that time of the month when all these ama amazing black women are supposed to be menstruating? Exactly. So it means without sanitary towels provided them, that piece of cloth on your waist is what you will have to be using in wiping yourself up for three months here, for three months on the ship till you make it out there. And the question is how comfortable would that be? So the women's dungeon, we have two parts, each room holding about 150 African women going through the same things the men went through, but constantly the African women were abused sexually. So much so that they will find some of these women pregnant in the dungeons, they examine them thoroughly to be sure of their pregnancy. Then they had houses out of the castle, they send them there, they take care of them, they have the baby, they will be cared for. The mother stays there, never goes back here. And they were doing that because whenever they brought in European soldiers, they died quickly. If they are dying that quickly, we can't trust the local people to do anything for us. So it's best we educate our own mulatto, mulattoes and mulattresses. They grow up and become just like us, work for us here as interpreters, clerks, secretaries, and everything. They bridge the gap. I think that's why, I think that's why the trade lasted so long. Exactly. Because you had the mulattoes. They all over. Who didn't link to the African side. Exactly. Related to their father's side. Yep. They just kept it going. So, with all of that going on, these women that went out there to have their kids stayed there and never went back here. But on the other hand, there were some women that were equally pregnant in the dungeons. The thing is, they rather found them pregnant aboard slave ships en route to the destinations. The Europeans would rather pick them up and toss them into the sea. Because at the destination, she becomes liability. She can't work for me to make money. I have to spend money on her. And what if that baby doesn't survive? Looking at all the conditions she'll be going through aboard a slave ship. <laughs> Meanwhile, if I throw her into the sea, I have insured my ship and cargo. So I have insurance. I go to the insurance company, get my insurance money, quick pays for the loss. So it's much better business picking her up, tossing her into the sea, than taking her alive. <laughs> And know that if you are talking about insurance, we have Lloyds of London. They played a major role in this. But aside that there came a time gold trade was not lucrative, but rather slave trade was booming. So banks started financing ships, going down to Africa, getting captives, selling the Americas. And we are talking of Wall Street here. We are talking of we are talking of Bank of America. We are talking of Barclays Bank. Yes. And all the ones that you know. Yes. And all the European Jew Exactly. You all realize that of all the rooms we've seen, in this room there is more natural light than the others. It's because this room was the exit point for all African men that had to stay in the men's dungeon. But then the exit was blocked off around 1833 when the British had abolished slave trade in all British colonies in West Africa. But originally the slave trade ended in 1807 in England. Which means illegally it still went on here in Africa. They never took the Africans to the Americas, but rather to, to, to Europe, but rather to the Americas, sorry. Right. And wonderful guess, what you see here is a shrine. African traditional religion. Yeah. Believing in the existence of the Almighty God, worshiping him through lesser gods, believing in the spirit, living things of nature. So you worship the Almighty God through his creation. Yes. 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 <laughs> and this was actually here on the land. But then there came a time the chiefs found out that the Portuguese had made Elmina a city on its own and they were protecting it from the other tribes. So they wished Europeans would come and stay at their end as well. That is why when the Europeans started coming to this side, it was easy for them to give the land out to them. So the Europeans paid rent to them. They settled here. But then there came a time the shrine was made to be taken out of here. 
So he was taken into the town. He stayed there until around 1961. Ghana had become republic after independence in 1957. Then the chiefs came to realize that no, if the Europeans have left, we don't have to leave this thing out here. We have to take it back to its original place. So then they came back here, did all kinds of rituals, built an altar here and brought the very original stones they took away back. And that is what we see here now. It hasn't got the original color, it's covered in blood. And the blood is not that of a human, but that of animals they sacrifice here all the time. Yes. And this is what we call the black stone. It's not, it doesn't mean the stone was already black. It's just a normal stone, but the blood makes it black. It's just like what the Native Americans do before the Europeans went there to mess it all up. Well, so under normal circumstance, we have a priest here that says prayers. He says a, a prayer, welcome brothers and sisters to the land of the ancestors, say very good things to them, but then today he's not around at the moment. Raise the hand to the three right. Okay, so we all are going to watch our heads. We are going to go in there. This is the part of the fort where they sent African men who always fought. There we go. With oh, all they've got, we go. by <laughs> any means necessary, yeah, they wanted to have their freedom. Ashe. Ashe. So then they fight, mm -hmm. the Europeans will beat them up to become very weak, put them in shackles and chains, throw them in there without food, water, no light, no air, they stay there until they lose their lives. But then when they pick up the dead bodies, they have to make sure everyone in the dungeon is here at the courtyard to witness the bodies being thrown out, to serve as a deterrent to them that they can't just get up and misbehave just as they did. But then they call them stubborn slaves or recalcitrant slaves, but the question is where they stubborn? No. No. They, they were trying to have their own freedom on their own motherland. Yeah. Yeah. So then calling them freedom fighters is the best. Freedom fighters. Not stuck on slaves. Yes. Freedom fighters. The door of no return. I'm about to walk in through the door of my return. Okay, so, I go, I go. Please, let's come together. What we have to talk about is very important and very beautiful. So please, let's bring it in. Everyone. Jonathan. Spit on it! Spit on it! Spit on it! Sabah, 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 Sabah,